Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching. Today, we've got a really awesome episode. We're talking about Elrond. We're talking about Holoride, the metaverse, NFTs, a lot of cool stuff. So we've got Niels from Holoride and we've got Benjamin from Elrond. And we're going to be talking about all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm going to first kick it over uh, to Niels to give an introduction to himself and then ben, Benjamin next. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, great to be on the show. Uh, so my name is Niels, I'm CEO and uh, one of the co-founders of Holoride. Uh, we kicked off Holoride early 2019 at CES uh, together with Audi and a showcase with Disney. Before that, uh, I have been with Audi for several years running their digital business department. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, we are now preparing our market launch next year. And uh, before we do so, uh, we have something great to share today with you guys. What, we, what else we are planning? Very exciting stuff. Uh, Benjamin, how about you, my friend? Um, so, yeah, I'm Benjamin, uh, one of the co-founders of Elrond, CEO of Elrond. Um, I, I think we've had some really great conversations in the past together. A lot is happening in Elrond, and one of the uh, really exciting conversations will be about Launchpad. Uh, the DL, the the Meyer Launchpad, uh, and then uh, Holo Ride as the the uh, signature project that comes on Elrond in the community, and and uh, I'd love to to do a deep dive on this and have a conversation with Niels and Will with you uh, about it. Fantastic. I mean, I think you teed it up in a, in a great way. So let's start there. Let's start with the, yeah, everything. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you know, well, at least everyone knows what they're getting into, right? So, Benjamin, if you could start with the Meyer Launchpad, I think there's been a lot of speculation about it. People are really excited about it. Launchpads are a big thing right now. People want to get involved in projects, you know, help bring them to life. Um, can you just share what, what detail you can about the Launchpad? Sure. So we've put a lot of thought and energy into creating uh, probably the most um, robust and efficient platform for the most ambitious um, projects, startups, and, and teams in the world to really launch um, and, and uh, get the springboard for the launch in, in the Elrond community. Uh, we've spent, spent a lot of time um, thinking this through, um, going through different iterations. And uh, we not only have created a platform that the community, I think, will, will discover and will be quite excited about, but we've spent um, most of the time with the teams that are coming on the launch pad. And um, I, I think this evening uh, is, is quite um, uh, interesting because um, the, the community gets to discover um, the first Launchpad project and why this matters. Uh, we've, we've also put a lot of thought into bringing projects that are uh, not the normal startups, like the immediate things that you usually see in the blockchain space, but rather startups that uh, will very likely take blockchain technology, make it invisible, and then take it to the mainstream through different, uh, very, very exciting and meaningful use cases. So user experience being focused on, you know, the the abstraction of the underlying complexity that, that users, quite frankly, uh, don't care so much about. Um, and so I guess that that's a really good segue into, you know, passing to Niels, like Benjamin mentioned, the first Launchpad project, could you start maybe by just talking a little bit about you know, where the synergy was and, and why you decided to launch on the, the Meyer launch pad in the first place. I think it would be cool to hear. Yeah, definitely. I, I can add to this and uh, I, I'm not sure whether everyone knows what Holoride is and what we are building in general. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe I do this first. Um, Please do. Um, we, we started with a clear purpose in mind. We wanted to make trends at time count. When I was at Audi, mm -hmm. we were looking at use cases, how we can increase the passenger experience, how we can make the passenger experience better because car manufacturers traditionally always focused on the buyer of cars and drivers of cars, but we all know that the passengers will become more and more important, uh, mm -hmm. especially when we have autonomous cars, but already today you have a lot of passengers. Um, every day, more than 1.4 billion people travel as passengers in private cars um, every day. Um, and, and every day you also have like um, 
50 million rides, paid rides in the four biggest ride hailing companies like Uber, um, Lyft, DD, Grab, um, where, where people travel on average like 21 minutes per trip. So mm -hmm. it, it, so called passenger economy is already there. And we were starting looking into this and said and discovered there is actually no proper media offering for those passengers. Um, and this is not so much about the technology in a car like okay there, there are a lot of screens in modern cars mm -hmm. it's more about the format and what you deliver and we have created a software that takes the motion of the car and the location of the car and um, translates this into motion and location aware content pieces um, so the easiest to discover a hollow ride is bring a vr goggle install our application connected wirelessly to the car, it picks up the real-time data of the car, how and where the car moves, and synchronizes this with the content. From an experience perspective, this could be, instead of the real car, virtually, you're sitting in a spaceship, and the spaceship moves exactly the same way like the real car does, so this increases the immersion. The car turns left or right, your spaceship turns left or right, so you're fully immersed because what your body feels and what you see is perfectly matching. Um, so it's it's literally a new way to experience content in cars. It's a completely new category, mm -hmm. which we call elastic content. Um, so because it adapts every time if the car takes a different route, so the driver of the car takes a different route, the experience will be different. And uh, it has a positive side effect as well. It's reducing motion sickness um, because many people that are prone to motion sickness, this is due to the fact that they look at the screen and what their body feels, it's not matching. Mm -hmm. And 3% of all passengers are prone to motion sickness, so severe motion sickness. Yes. We can't cure it and we are not a medical device. <laughs> people will, will get motion sick because this, this is the fact, but we showed in studies that we can significantly reduce it for a big group. So, and then we brought it to, um, um, we spun out of Audi because we wanted to make it and follow the, the a, a more democratized idea, bring this technology to the market so that every car, uh, car manufacturer can use it and connect to our platform. And also every content creator can start creating something for our platform. So really use, um, all the cars out there and luckily the board of management at audi let us do this so they I'm, I'm still very fortunate that they supported us from the beginning and this this new idea to approach um bringing technology to the market and when we started thinking this through um and we'll talk about the metaverse we said hey um we, we are we are literally turning vehicles into moving theme parks we, we we are something like the transportation company for the metaverse because you can travel all these virtual spaces you can pick up things you can interact with items that are um persistently stored somewhere based on map, uh, map data so and last year then we said okay in 2022 we'll launch our consumer product how do we make it most exciting and most valuable for every partner and that's when we started looking into, into blockchain technology and the, the benefits it brings, transparency, um, the, the economic value to attached to it. If you're, if you're a user, if you're a creator, if you're an automotive partner. And then we started looking into the different blockchains that are existing, the different networks. And mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm very, 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 very happy that we uh, stumbled up on Elrond and yeah. uh, I mean, and his team, they came to see us. There was a lot of dedication from the beginning. We had brainstormings in our conference rooms uh, mm -hmm. for a week at night, talking things through, and um, it just clicked. And it just clicked on two ends. One was the performance part. I'm, I'm so impressed by what the team has built, the Elrond team has built in the last few years. It's, it's impressive. Performance is impressive. Um, the, the security aspect is there, which is always very important. Uh, the, the technology manages to, to enable low cost uh, for, for utilizing the network. Um, they're carbon negative. I think you are still the only one in Europe that are carbon negative, which is an important aspect for us as a also sustainable native company. This was one of the criteria. Um, the user experience part is probably the one you stressed the most in all the conversations I had around blockchain, you, you and your team stressed this the most. And this just clicked. We are an experienced company. You focus on, or Elrond focuses on, on user experience. These were all the aspects we loved so much and the dedication of the team. 
that's why we have chosen Elrond. And uh, then they shared with us that they have this fantastic plan of bringing bringing a launch pad to life uh, uh, under the Maya brand and everything connected to it. Sorry, and it was just I I had to be the first project on this Maya launch pad. Sorry <laughs> to say, but this was like I, I had to do this. And we jointly worked very hard over the last few few months uh, to make this happen. And um, I couldn't be more excited, to be honest. That's fantastic. Well, thanks for the the great introduction. Of course, I think anyone who is watching has probably ridden in a vehicle before. I think it's a safe assumption. And so you probably realize that there there really hasn't been much innovation in 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 vehicle entertainment since, you know, the flip down DVD player in the ceiling of your mom's minivan, which hey, I was a beneficiary of as a kid, so that's fine. But so here's the here's one thing I wanted to point out that I thought was very interesting about the way you describe the process of coming to the world of blockchain that I think is worth pointing out. Mm -hmm. You started with a use case, a problem that you wanted to solve with virtual reality, augmented reality, and, and elastic content, as you described it. You then found that blockchain is a solution to one component of that overarching solution, rather than right. saying, we want to use blockchain because liquidity, be, you know, because whatever, insert buzzword here. So this was a very problem focused choice, which I think is, is important to note because that's what the lifeblood of this technology is, is, is applying it to very specific problems here. You know, the metaverse ownership of content, um, you know, being able to, to create ecosystems where people can monetize their creations more easily, more readily. So yes. I just wanted to point that out, uh, to, to highlight to folks that are watching. That distinction. I, I, I could I couldn't have said it better. Um, and uh, when we started Whole Ride as a project, everyone said you guys are nuts um, mm -hmm. because uh, um, why should people use VR in a car? VR is made for home usage for mm -hmm. gaming at home. And uh, we said no. There are so many things coming together. The whole extended reality, which is like the umbrella term for VR, AR, mixed reality. So the whole extended reality idea, the metaverse mm -hmm. idea, will spatial computing will be the next thing. We'll move away from screens. We'll, we'll interact in the space. So, oh, let's wait. Mobility is moving through space. Uh, the, the time in a car is perceived as wasted time for most people because they can really be productive, have fun or interact with other people except the other passengers. And if you're a teenager, you might not interact <laughs> might not to interact with your parents, but um, this is a different story and said, okay, the data, so this is basically IoT, <laughs> you have connected devices, yeah. modern cars are connected devices. And then with our intelligent technology, I don't know whether we would call it AI, but you have like XR, IoT, AI, you guys are nuts. This, this is, will it ever work? And we said, yes, we have this vision, this use case. We want to be experience focused. And these things are coming together. And when I said to some people in my network back in the past, blockchain, I, I strongly believe will at the missing piece to it, they said, oh yeah, the, the fourth password, of course, yeah, because you do XR, <laughs> you do I, yeah, of course you do yeah. blockchain. Um, but you, you have to be very, 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 very stubborn on your vision. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you see the things coming together. And as you said, it's coming from the experience angle and how can it contribute to the value that passengers are perceiving, our partners are perceiving. And now people start to realize, fuck, these guys are onto something because now Facebook started talking about the metaverse. There must be something mm -hmm. on it because they, Facebook talked about the metaverse. Hey, this idea is already ages old. So it's since 92 that the term was coined. The idea of VR goes back almost 50 years. So the first, yeah. that's it. So it's clear. It's clear. It had to come. And now they say, oh, what Polaroid is building is actually pretty smart. And oh, they use NFTs and blockchain. That's a good move. And now I also tell them, um, yeah, and and probably you should consider Elrond when you when you when you work in this space because it's it's about performance, it's about cost, it's about user experience. Yeah, and um, yeah, there are also challenges like us, and that's what I love a lot. So, but love um, it. Stop I stop mean, me when I'm talking too much. I'm, I'm no, one, that's okay. One, it, this <laughs> it's not about me. It's about you guys, right? So I, here's where I want to go next, right? And I want to come back to you, Niels, to talk about what's next for Hollow Ride and what people can expect and how they can engage. 
But I wanted to to kind of flip the script a little bit and ask, you know, Benjamin from from the Elrond side, having engaged with Hollow Ride and having, you know, worked together, what drew you to the project? Like, where do you think is the most, uh, you know, fascinating? What are the most fascinating components here? Um, I, I think Niels has um, expressed the key elements very, very well. And it's precisely this point that we've discovered as we touch base. Uh, so uh, the, the way I basically discovered whole ride was my brother told me that there's a really cool startup in Germany that uh, we should definitely meet, that we should basically um, have a conversation, come by and, and so forth. So, of course, uh, we have a lot of things uh, on the plate at Elrond, try to focus on a lot of things. But um, since he mentioned they're really cool and we definitely have to have a conversation with them, I thought uh, we should definitely have a conversation with them because we're very, very curious to see startups that are building meaningful products with high impact uh, uh, on, on the world that we live in. And um, this, this was a great opportunity. We basically visited them in, in Germany and two things I think struck me. Uh, one was the clear focus on a product that at first had nothing to do with blockchain. So here were some, some uh, really cool people that were trying to focus on building a product that was extremely cool. And the way we tested the product was not only that we had the conversation, but then we entered the car, put on the goggles, played the game, um, drove around the, the city a bit, and then the conversation was a different conversation, right? It, it's one thing to have the conversation, a different thing to experience this and see it. And then um, this, this was one thing. So the clear focus on something that has meaning and can have a lot of impact um, on the world. And then secondly, if you think about it, it's almost surprising that no one has done this yet in a compelling way. I mean, this is so clear and so obvious as a selling point that there's literally no one who would sit in a car and would have an opportunity like this, whether it's a child, a teenager, or an adult uh, that would not play a variation of this. Whether you're exploring the world, whether you're playing games or meeting with other friends and have meetings or whatever, this is... Um, Super, super obvious. If you look just um, at the near future uh, that that we have uh, in front of us, and so given that the substance was there, that we experienced this firsthand, and that we met the team, it was clear that we we had to push, um, had to show them what Elrond can do, because there was a lot of conversation there, as as you can uh, imagine, back and forth. Um, but then we also said that this is a really, really good team to start the conversation with uh, and not only uh, introduce the team, but introduce the Mar Launchpad with Holoride. It's mm -hmm. the, the perfect conversation that then leads into many things that uh, Niels has touched upon. So the, the one thing that I, I think everyone in the community will be fascinated about is when can they essentially this is this is uh, just another team member i i uh, suppose yeah, who let the dogs out everyone will ask themselves about is when they can test something like this because testing it then um, gives you this very clear idea that it's a different world and we need it as fast as possible so quite quite excited and quite eager to um, see them deliver as fast as possible and uh, see the product uh, come to reality. Beautiful. Well, uh, Nils, I think that's a perfect time to come back to you, right? This, like, I guess the path from here, right? We're sitting, you know, Q4 2021 hereabouts. What's the, what's the next step? What's the path for, for Holoride going forward? And how can people get engaged and, and, and contribute? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. So 
Uh, we plan to launch our product, our consumer product um, in, in Q4 2022. Uh, but up till then, we'll build up a lot of momentum um, because we'll, we'll add new partners, partners to our platform. We'll engage with other content creators. And one of the, the major cornerstones is because we're, we're a privately held company, um, but this idea lifts from participation on the creator side, on the passenger side, on our automotive partners, and, and everyone who believes this can be the next big thing. Um, and this is why we are launching also our right token on the, on the Maya Launchpad, because this is, uh, this is basically a, a way to participate. Um, in the first step, it's a utility token, our right token, but we'll do a lot of ecosystem uh, sounding boards. So we'll, we'll, we'll engage the, uh, the participants on how, how should we how should we build our content ecosystem around it? Because the right token is meant to supercharge our content ecosystem. So um, there will be a lot of value attached to this because, of course, if you're if you're a community member, you'll get community benefits. Uh, I think that's that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. And um, yeah, of course, the whole NFT topic for us is essential because it has so many great things attached to it if you imagine you're traveling the metaverse or let's call it the motorverse in our case <laughs> you're, if you're traveling you're playing games interacting you're 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 collecting items um and then you 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 decide to share them with others to sell them and so on every time a passenger does it the creator that has created this item this this game these worlds will will benefit from it um, and also, if, if, if you, and we have a lot of ideas, not saying that we'll all implement them, but we have a lot of ideas, maybe passengers are incentivized uh, for, for playing the game or engaging with our experience during their ride. Mm -hmm. So it's like a play to earn mechanism, but, but it's a right to play to earn mechanism. And maybe there's some value attached for, for future rides. Maybe, maybe we incentivize people that are contributing to, to the to the change in the mobility industry if they ride in electric vehicles maybe th there is a is an upside for them um they're, they're, they're for the partner royalties i mean every time an item gets gets traded they they benefit from it we'll, we'll potentially set up a grant program for developers to really build and and contribute to our platform it doesn't have to be a major studio maybe the developer um right next door has great ideas and we'll we'll open up for them to, to create items for our platform. So the idea is really to make it an open and very vibrant ecosystem for content creation that are, yeah, contents that are motion lo and location aware. So I, I think um, we, we also have a lot of ideas, but I don't want to spoil them. We have a follow-up, hopefully. One, one, uh, we will. We, to. Um, we have a lot of ideas how we engage our community towards market launch. And I, mm -hmm. I can assure you, assure you one thing, this won't be boring. This won't be boring. <laughs> I'm boring the rides and also the building up the, to our, towards our product launch will make it an exciting journey. And uh, with as a right token holder, you might have an entry ticket to participate actively in this, in this community. And uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm very much looking forward to this. So needless to say, it's going to be a fun year leading up to product launch in, in, in the, at the end of 2022. And I mean, my, as you're speaking, as you were speaking about that, my, you know, my imagination as a creator, but also as a consumer is running wild, right? You know, if I'm, if I'm a mom and pop bagel shop off the highway, I might want to pay to have a, a superimposed virtual reality sign that points you in neon letters to my, to my shop, right? there's so many cool things that you can do when you have this digital layer that's superimposed over the the physical world and, and so this kind of starts to enter into the concept of the metaverse which i would love to sort of wrap there and yeah. talk about that a little bit and what your both of your visions are for what the metaverse means for the world <sighs> Do you want to start, Benjamin? Or? Um, I, I think uh, it's uh, it's yeah, it's uh, hard to actually stop on this once we yes. start. Yes. So <laughs> it's really, really great to to have the conversation about this. Uh, tying a bit um, or starting from Holo Ride, mm -hmm. I think once you have this option to explore the metaverse 
while in a vehicle, whatever that vehicle may be, you're forever changing the way people travel and mm -hmm. experience the travel. Like the opportunities there are literally endless. Uh, so the once once someone uh, shows you that this can be done and how it can be done, I expect we'll see a lot of iterations, a lot of excitement, a lot of demand and, and so forth. So this is one of the elements. Uh, and the metaverse, I expect, will tie into a lot of um, experiences that you might have um, as uh, at your workspace while doing different other art activities or while, while, while traveling and, and so forth. The fact that you'll be able to travel the metaverse um, means that you can switch between different worlds. You'll be able to basically explore them. And uh, this, at first, I think will almost overwhelm you if you think about it um you, you you're almost paralyzed with opportunities that you can open and you won't want to stop i mean imagine the normal drive somewhere uh where you can't wait to arrive where you're with with the children maybe and they they uh, don't have enough patience uh, ever to to arrive somewhere and so forth and then imagine being able to turn this on all of a sudden, everything changes. Like you don't want to arrive at that particular place anymore because this becomes um, so interesting that you can start earning money, you can start creating new stuff, and you can start living maybe part of your life into this virtual um, environment. Ideally, uh, we will probably have to strive to tie all of these um, benefits and dopamine rushes that the metaverse will bring with help, healthy habits. Because it's, uh, it's quite easy for this to become the world where most of the people spend their time mm -hmm. and then you literally don't want to go out anymore. You don't want to do anything else. And we should, we should be very careful about that. But uh, that only speaks to how exciting this new world will be. And building it, exploring it, and so forth with, with Holoride will be something that uh, will definitely um, kickstart or accelerate the process even more than uh, it, it would come to life otherwise. Yeah, I, I, like, I like the point you, st you stressed, Benjamin, also with the, with the responsibility one has when, when building those solutions. And um, I think... Um, for, for many people, the metaverse is still a very abstract term, but it's it's basically a very, very nice science fiction now marketing term for spatial computing, because you're 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 at a digital layer to the to reality. However, it's not it's not just it's not a parallel world. The the metaverse is something that is heavily connected to reality. So it's uh, basically a there is a supernova happening. The digital collides with the physical and creates not a digital layer on the phys uh, physical. It's it's like a, a new space you're creating, a completely new new place. Uh, that, that's why I'm always talking about the supernova because two things collide and hopefully don't create a black hole. But it's it's like <laughs> something new, a new space, um, and and you're moving through this space. And the, the beauty is that the reality influences what you're experiencing virtually. And um, we are like opening this up in a very fascinating way because you, you're immediately feeling it. You're in a real car, you feel, your body feels real motion and you're traveling, you're traveling a virtual space. Um, this is a very easy and very intuitive access to it. Um, and uh, the, the responsibility comes, hey, it's good that a trip ends at a certain point of time. So the experience is, is covering the journey part where currently time is, is wasted time. And it doesn't have to be just games. Think about educational content. So um, reading books, you, you'll forget things. Maybe you watch a documentary, you might remember it, but experience stuff like traveling. We all know the movie A Bug's Life. Yeah, just imagining mm -hmm. as if you're traveling this and you learn about all the creatures. It's a completely new way of educating people. Um, for for well-being or mental wellness, this opens up a completely new space because 
traveling in a car or transitioning with the help of mobility from A to B is also a mental transition. We all know this when we leave our desk and we go home, something is happening. We are, there, there is a transit happening. And, and enhancing this maybe with, with meditation, relaxation, well-being applications will be a big benefit for, for many users. Productivity is another big field. People would love to maybe to, to, your, to use the time productively, so work in a car. But if you get motion sick, you can't do that. We might help with it in the future and balance things out so that you can get productive in a car in a way that you, that you can be productive today. So saying entertainment is just one area, think about all the other use cases and they're all metaverse use cases because they they it can be connected to the real space or it has to be connected to the real space why experiencing digital content and and this is just so and we are just we're just starting we're yeah. we're in at, we are not even at day one uh day one is when our right token launches so we're, we're before day one and we didn't call it holo uh, the ticker is ride what because we believe in the in the idea of people taking rides in cars and other most mode of transportation mm -hmm. and the ride you all, all know it from a theme park ride it's something exciting and this is this is what we are building and and this is what we believe the the metaverse will be um will be it, it's not it's not one company that is building the metaverse. Yes. And I think there's also a misperception. Many people th say, oh, Fortnite, that will be the new metaverse or um, Roblox, that's a metaverse. It's not, it's a multiverse because yeah. there are many different aspects, but the metaverse is something, it's like the internet. It's it, everyone can contrib contribute and we'll have things that are that are not so good and we'll have things that are fascinating and yeah. we definitely want to be one company contributing that it's that it's a great place to interact in and we know the responsibility we have um we also in our advisory board we have a fantastic lady that that um it talks about very often about the the humanistic angle of technology and we we exchange a lot of ideas there and we have entertainment folks like joan anthony russo that are building worlds in movies today they, they are the mm -hmm. probably the best known directors because they they have created worlds with the avengers movies yeah. and they're they're uh, people hire them for building movie worlds but it's so great to to talk about building other worlds too and and having these fantastic talents also in our advisory board to interchange exchange ideas with it's just ah, I, I love my job <laughs> what say. more can you ask for right <laughs> what what more could you ask for and and you know for for people that are watching either thinking about themselves as con, you know consumers of the metaverse whether that's hollow ride hollow ride plus others etc or people that are creators that want to have opportunities to create in the metaverse which is very important right now is to have people creating content and being a part of that economy you know how can people engage with with you at hollow ride uh, you know today to be a to stay abreast of what's going on in your space and, and follow you towards launch yeah uh, they can definitely already today sign up to our creator space if they're interested uh, okay. and test with our sdk our elastic sdk how it feels like to to understand the logics of this completely new content category so i would everyone encourage to do so um so just to get a feeling if you're content creator um and otherwise we'll we'll open up that's why we also create the token it's about the community it's about all the creative minds out there we just built the tech um and we just built the tool set and, and enable the infrastructure um but but it's it's about every everyone out there every one of you guys um and and get, let's get in touch and i i think that's why we created the right token because we want to democratize this idea and and really supercharge with all the ideas out there and um you have just i mean the easiest thing is follow us on twitter join our telegram channel um just just change ideas with us and and make this happen really quick i think what differentiates us from many projects and when i got into the space and i'm fairly new since since i worked intensively now for several months on this but this i consider still be a newbie in this in this space mm -hmm. um what i what i learned is there are a lot of projects out there but what really differentiates us we we have a product and we are not blockchain native but and, and as i said it's not for us it's not about the technology it's about the experience and we mm -hmm. think 
we 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 the, the best thing to utilize the community the technology is to to engage with all the creative people and and make this happen and and uh, and and yeah really really help to get, bring this mainstream we we want to contribute to bring this great technology blockchain the Elrond network um, we want to take this mainstream this is this is because I think there are a lot of startups out there a lot of companies out there that should look into this um, mm -hmm. but didn't find the right access point yet and um, I I'm, yeah I'm very I'm very bullish um, on on the future of uh, blockchain technology and yeah also what our our friends at Elrond are building and we're building together now so that's um, yeah just just join our ride i can say join our ride ah i see what you <laughs> did there right um great so i i mean we've covered a lot of ground uh we, you know we covered the the Meyer launch pad and what's going on in the elrond world uh what hollow ride is what the the path is and how you, folks can get engaged uh as you you're probably used to in the youtube world i will leave links in the description and the pinned comments i know you get people get tired of hearing me say that but there are links there for you to click if you're interested. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank uh, Niels and Benjamin for joining me on the show. We'll definitely have maybe an ongoing conversation on this. So I'd love to share more about the project. Yeah. Thank you so awesome. much for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. It was a pleasure. Great, great conversation. And I'm sure the community is, is just discovering this and why it matters. So quite, quite a great conversation. Exciting stuff. Grateful for the opportunity and very grateful for everyone's time. If you're watching this video, if you have questions, leave them in the comments and uh, we will definitely be in touch. Until next time, cheers.